Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now I'm going to update you on what we can expect for the 2023 hurricane season, what kind of pattern we can look into, and possibly what kind of storms we can look towards, and maybe the biggest flood prone areas as well. Now, if you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year long, and I will keep you as safe as possible, as early as possible during hurricane season. Now I'm gonna show you the information that's come out. Remember the link is in the description so you can read about it yourself. Then I'm gonna come here and show you and explain to you what exactly it means. Now just turn into the last page and get to the final answer now. You can see that our Enzo alert, La Nina is over guys. Now we'll explain what that means. Now there's Enzo neutral conditions observed and they're expecting that to last all the way through spring and early summer. But late summer, we're going to go into an El Nino pattern. Now, what that means is that we've been under a La Nina pattern where the winds are going from the east, easterly winds pushing to the west, and all the sea surface temperatures over here in the eastern Pacific has been going further to the west. So now what that means is all these easterly winds pushing the warm temperatures to the west, creating a cold pocket on the eastern Pacific is when it does that, you get upwelling and it pulls the cold temperatures from below to replace what's been pushed out of the area in the parcel. So you get warm temperatures on the Western Pacific, you get cooler temperatures on the Eastern Pacific. That's a La Nina. Now, when we go into an Enzo neutral, that means all these easterly winds that's been pushing all the warm temperatures to the West, getting the upwelling, getting the cooler temperatures on the Eastern Pacific, is now stale, mild, or just all together gone. And now all this warm temperatures can start moving to the Eastern Pacific. Now when that happens, you're in a neutral phase, but once this warm temperatures builds up really good over here, you're gonna start getting into an El Nino phase. And that plays a lot of different characteristics on where these hurricanes form at, where they go. Now you can see the pattern that these temperatures are going into. So right now you're in the La Nina, but once you get towards where we at now and April, cause they already observed a neutral phase. That's where we at right here on this black line, right on neutral. But as we go towards April, May, and June, these are the first letters for the month, May, June, and July, June, July, and August. Then it's gonna start leaving that neutral phase and start going towards the El Nino phase. And once we go for July, August, September, August, September, and October, even all the way to the November, we're staying in that El Nino phase where the conditions are different than neutral. So you can see right here from March, April, and May, we are losing that La Nina and we are gaining a neutral phase. And, and that's what the phase that they're observing now. It is gonna stick around for April, May, and June. May, June, and July, we're gonna start growing into a chance for El Nino phase. For June, July, and August, El Nino is gonna surpass neutral. And once we go for July, August, and September, all the way to October and November, we're going to stay in an El Nino phase. Now you can see this anomaly happening on National Weather Service and Climate Prediction Center. Up here you have your weeks of the months all the way towards March. And you can see how the cooler temperatures are leaving and now warmer temperatures are adding up in the Eastern Pacific. It means we definitely going towards a neutral phase and soon we're going to be in an El Nino phase. This is going to strengthen. And like I showed you in the beginning, we get the warmer waters in the Eastern Pacific. You get all these high trade winds that gives you a lot of wind shear against these systems trying to come in through the Caribbean. So this means that the Eastern Pacific is definitely gonna be more active before anything else. You can see here that you will have more hurricanes due to less vertical wind shear and fewer hurricanes due to the stronger vertical wind shear of these trade winds. At the same time, it is gonna make a difference in the precipitation on the U.S., and it is going to make a difference on where these tracks are going to be. Now, as of March 15th, they have noticed very much warmer waters in the eastern Pacific. They also noticed well above average temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is where we can play a big factor, because even though they can weaken up as they come through the Caribbean, once they get away from those trade winds and they get into that warmer Gulf water, things could still happen. 
And you can see this on climate.gov, that as the temperatures are changing in the eastern Pacific, you can see the above average temperatures that's growing in the Gulf of Mexico for this hurricane season. Now, another thing that's going to change is as we go from this neutral to this El Nino, is this Pacific jet is going to start bringing in more moisture. That means more precipitation for the southern half of California all the way through New Mexico as it warms up for the northern half of the U.S., including Canada. They also have put out a flood outlook for 2023. And you can see right here, you have a moderate level in the red for central towards southern California to have more floods during the spring of this 2023, as well as up here in these red sections and major floods going right along the river of western Wisconsin and western Illinois. Now this map was put out by NOAA guys and it depicts where there's greater chance than 50% of minor to major flooding during March through May. Now credit goes to Max Defender 8 for this valuable information I'm about to show you. Now during a normal La Nina hurricane season for the last 30 years, you can see how much favorable the whole environment is just blown up and a lot of fish storms as well. Just a lot of activity. And look at the difference when you have an El Nino for the last 30 years season, guys. A lot of trade winds come in, pushes a lot of the activity into the Atlantic. It causes a lot of fish storms, but at the same time, from Jamaica to Cuba to Puerto Rico, all the way to the Bahamas, all the way up the East Coast gets real vulnerable when they push these further to the east. But if you notice, after they get out of the Caribbean, the ones that do still make it through all that wind shear, they form up real strong once they get to those above average temperatures in the Gulf of Mexico. So it only takes just one. We learned that with Hurricane Ian. So please don't let your guards down. But at the same time, we should see a lot of weak storms all the way through the Caribbean, which could bring a lot of flooding, a lot of big, broad systems full of precipitation. At the same time, getting a lot of shear. Now, link in the description so you can go watch this. is from NOAA visualizations of our hurricanes. And during a neutral phase in 2005, this is when we actually had Hurricane Katrina, guys. I know you can't forget this. I'm from New Orleans myself. Last name's Grimion. Very tragic and a lot of tragedy caused during that neutral phase. And let's not forget that later on, in our later hurricane season, we're going to start going towards the El Nino phase. But we got to also remember in 2017, when we had our El Nino season, late in our season towards the end of summer, we had Hurricane Harvey. And it came through the Caribbean. It stayed weak that whole time. But once it got into the Gulf of Mexico, then it ramped all the way up with those above average warm temperatures. And y'all know the rest of the story from there. Just a real mean system that caused massive flooding in Texas. This was unbelievable amount. I'm sure everyone's heard about Harvey, but if you have not, please go look it up because it was so terrible, guys. So we do have a lot of things to look for at certain times of the season. I will stay on it for you. And not only that, National Hurricane Center is doing something new now. Instead of a five-day forecast, they're going to do a seven-day forecast for any of these systems that grow up in the tropics or elsewhere. They are literally in full confidence of their long range modeling information now. Now, seven days away is not going to be law. What they say is going to be, we all know it's going to change. Tracks always change and cones change, but still they can give us a look ahead confirming everything that comes out for hurricane season and also the name so here's the names of the 2023 season guys and they did replace harvey irma maria and nate with harold idalia margo and nigel so these are the names for the 2023 hurricane season so thank you so much for your time i do hope this helped you understand a little bit more of what we're going into for this hurricane season make sure you subscribe I will keep you notified. Make sure you click that bell. That's most important. Subscribing is good. They only give you a occasional video. If you click that bell and click all, you will get every update. But before we go, it is Friday. Yay. Congratulations to someone today because if you've never been here before for months now, we give away a solar weather station. They're celebrating 80 years. So we're doing it all year along every other day 
giving away a free one to a viewer. You must be a subscriber. You must hit the like button. And you got to put the comment that I put up lately. It's been Weatherman. I will do another one on Sunday when I come back from Sabbath because everything else that I did in yesterday's video is still the same information, guys. But first, let's pick today's winner. And I have a new little way of letting you see it. So who is it going to be? Aram Ferguson, congratulations, you are the winner of the Solar Weather Station. Make sure you contact me at this email, weathermanplustoday at gmail.com. That way I can get your address and ship this out to you as quick as possible. Weatherman. Can't get no simpler than that. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your time. I do appreciate every single one of you. And we will give another one away on Sunday. I do hope I did help y'all understand a little bit better what kind of pattern we're going into, what we can expect. Please share this information. If it helped you understand a little bit, maybe you can help another understand what they have coming their way. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate every single one of you. Now, before we go off onto our Friday, I want to talk to you about Psalm 143, 9 through 12. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For the righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant." Amen. Have a great weekend, everybody. God bless you and your families. And remember, above all things going on in our life, God loves you. God wants the best for you. And all glory always goes to God, our Father, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And may he always direct you, give you wisdom, and put peace in your hearts and in your home. That's most important is have peace and love in your heart. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have a great day, everybody.